sword and stone action here. Ah, got it. I was meant. It was meant for me. <laughs> Now that we have this half finished, we need to set the truss that goes flush on that side of the wall so we can do the drywall all the way up before we build this wall and sandwich it in. Unfortunately for us, the truss we need is that one right there, the very bottom. So we're moving this whole stack. And while we're doing this, we're realizing these girder trusses that are all nailed together, like doubles, are super heavy. And we're going to need a lull or a, a crane or something to lift these things up. So Jamie's trying to hook that up as well. Same thing. Gonna call a friend, maybe. Phone a friend on Tony! This. We're getting a bunch of men on these things because if you don't keep these things flat while they're carried flat like this and they bow too much, you could pop these plates. That'd be bad news for us. We're just gonna shoot it up. Oh, we're going on top of the wall first. Yeah. Yep. That's it. You got it? I think so. Okay, I'm out. Okay. Come to you, Jay. All right, I'm gonna flip to me. Okay. Yeah, 200 pound truss. If we can't lift 100 pounds hey, each, then we just need to go home. In. Get us a tip of it here. I got, I got a hand. I got a hand. Racing. I got it. I'm feeling good up there. Jesus, I'm, I'm feeling pretty guys, good. It's all yours. All right. Just a little way to go, and then I'm going to get on a screw gun. All right. I'm, I'm on the gravel, wall. Gravel, gravel. We'll go raise way. Okay. Now we got to get her centered up. Okay. Hold what you got. All right. We'll have a straight cut. That's it. Hit it. All right. Let's go. All right. It's tacked. You know what we just built is yeah. a giant sail up yeah. here. So I'm really hoping the wind does not kick up any worse than it is. Ooh. Yeah. Makes my giblets kind of tickle. <laughs> being, up on, being up on this web, being up on this thing with the wind. Hit it. Yep. It's confirmed. I think they're going to go and cut the angle on it. We've got our plastic up and we've got it lapped in such a way that hopefully water won't run in. Arlo's device, this whole method. Now we're going to stack this first layer of drywall again and a second layer and encapsulate the whole thing again all the way up. It's getting super windy out here, which is not ideal for what we're doing, but at least the wind is blowing the sheet against the wall, like tighter instead of away from it. So I think we're going to keep going. How's it look on the back side of the wall? Oh, it looks uh, plasticky. 
<laughs> Jason is dying to be over here with us, like doing stuff, and we're like, just stay over there because someone's gonna have to go up and down if someone's not over there. So yeah, this is like torture for him. Yeah, and everyone's yelling at me. Are you doing anything back there? <laughs> we're gonna suck. I think we're gonna start a trend with impact drivers. Yeah. Like drywall well, guys will probably start just using them. No, all the pro drywall guys already use impacts. Look at that <laughs> roll here. <laughs> you can just put it down deep if you need to. You know the pros are used to impacts already. What's sad is we have a specialty drill for doing these drywall screws on drywall and we're not using it because we're so used to the impacts that we can't even use this other kind of drill. It's terrible. We're terrible. We're back on site this morning and it got cold last night. And I don't love this ice skating rink that we're having to work on this morning. It's super slick. Uh, what do you think? I think it's good moonwalking. Oh, can you moonwalk? Uh, I think I can. Uh, it's been a long time. Oops. Heads up. I hate drywall. Dude, it sucks so bad. What's going on with your pouch right there, bud? Well, that's nice because when everyone's like, hey, you got any screws? I'm just, I'm like, <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, I, I need some, but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm gonna pass. It's perfect. It's hands free, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take Let some. me get in there. Oh, oh yeah. There you go. Okay. Look at these guys that are like, what is going on right now? Down here, <laughs> need some? I'm sensing a little confusion from down below. A little bit of disgust. A little bit of uh, disappointment, <laughs> yeah. maybe. I think yeah. jealousy. We're, we're, Disapproval for sure. We're, I'm not thinking about filing a sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. That's one way to do it. Arlo can't get the level out of there. I tried pulling on it like crazy. I put this on it. That's a pretty good contraption. Okay, wait, let me get this a little tighter. <laughs> wow. I, I, we I may just have to saws all the tube. I think I had a cut, try to cut it We figured out the problem the level was frozen into a big chunk of ice at the bottom of this piece of plastic it's stored in. It's kind of nasty in the end of yeah. that thing. <laughs> Out on the drain now. This video is brought to you by AG1, and what I've found in my life is that my health is priceless. Like, if I'm not healthy, nothing else matters. I need to be the leader of my family's adventures. I gotta go to work every day, and I just wanna feel good. It really matters to me. That's why I'm trying to make healthy habits now that support my health and make me feel great. If you're not familiar with AG1, it's a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder engineered to fill the nutrition gaps in your diet and support your body's nutrition needs across four pillars of health, gut health, immune support, energy, and recovery. It's packed with 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food sourced ingredients, combining the perfect amount of micronutrients, absorption, and taste to jumpstart your daily routine. It's just one scoop and eight ounces of water once a day, that's it. And even though AG1 is green, it does not taste like broccoli or ground up Brussels sprouts. To me, it actually has a semi-sweet taste to it. 
I really love the extra energy level I feel all day long when I use AG1. And I also love that my nutrition gaps when I'm on the road and not eating exactly like I should be are getting filled and I'm staying healthy. Head to the link in our video description now to get a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And this is a game changer for supporting your immune system. Again, AG1 is gonna give my community an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. Jason. Yeah. Are you wiping mud on the back of this truss? No. <laughs> and how did they get there? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. I'll be like my kids. I don't remember. We good to go, Mudsy Bogues? That's you, bro. Look at me. I think we're ready. Yeah, you're Mudsy. <laughs> Uh, I've got the end. Have you got the end? You guys get out of the way. Get clear. Get clear. Okay, hold up. Uh, hold there. I'm going to lift all the way up. You ready? One, two, three. You good? Yep, got to come my way by the corner. Yep, that's it. All right, screw it. Screw it off. We've got our drywall done and that was not fun at all, really any part of it. Now we're gonna seal it up just like we did at the bottom. Jason's running some zip tape across the top. Then we're gonna run plastic up, lap it over, zip tape that again, just make sure it's completely sealed because it is gonna rain before we get this roof totally on. Make it a little longer so it wraps around. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wrap around. Let me go under. I got you. Somebody's just got to tell us when we're like level and the right height. the cabinet layout plan here this was drawn by somebody at Lowe's and I'm gonna go through the whole house and draw each cabinet in its place with its correct size so that we can verify that the homeowner can place this order I'm I am going to be responsible for the fit it is really important to have all these cabinets drawn out on the floor everywhere in the house so that the electrical gets put in the right place like behind the refrigerator behind the stove so that the plumbing gets put in the right place for the sink and they actually know the exact borders of where the cabinets are separate from each other so that all those things get put in the right place you really don't want to find out after drywall after paint when you install a cabinet that there's an outlet that splits between the two halves of two, di of two different cabinets. That would be totally a disaster. So this is a really good thing to do. I highly recommend it. And you know, you gotta have all this stuff done before you need your cabinets. You can't wait until you need your cabinets to do this. It's already too late. I'm looking at these plans here for the kitchen cabinets and there are so many dimensions on this sheet that I literally can't even tell what is what. They're overlapping and crossing each other. There's just numbers everywhere. Like I can't even figure it out. <laughs> Hey, what? who framed this window? So Jamie was checking everything for the cabinet layout and he found something wrong. The window over here is a couple inches from where it's supposed to be, which is really important because that's in front of the kitchen sink. So if it's not dead center on the cabinet that's in front of the kitchen sink, it's really noticeable. So we have to fix it. At least he found it. 
Uh, I'm glad we found it sooner than later. Yeah. Yes, I'm actually happy about it. It'll yeah. just take a minute to fix. Yeah. And we're not trying to pretend we do everything perfect because we don't. Uh, the key, I think, in, in getting a good house is fixing the things you find when you find them. Right away. Right away instead of waiting until it becomes impossible for some reason. Like you're beyond the point where you can fix it once this has insulation and drywall and cabinets installed against it. So Jamie's going to whip it out, remodel crew, just take a minute, really. Can't say whip it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You look good, by the way. You think so? Yeah. You're just being nice, right? <laughs> you look like you're gonna go jump out of an airplane. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, this is the fastest way to move a window right here, I think. Yep. Thanks to all my uh, remodeling over Keep the years. Keep coming, you got about an inch. It's tighter than I thought. Yeah. I thought it would feel a little bit loose, actually. In here, it's there. Whoa! Yeah? Whoa! Hey, there. Oh! Get up there. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're enjoying this. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird. I actually developed a little bit of a love for remodeling over the last five years, so I, I'm just having a good time. I mean, what can I say? Are, am I not allowed to enjoy it? Am I supposed to hate it? Is that the thing? I don't hate it. Love it. Now, the only reason I actually took this whole part off is because this section was supposed to tie to the bottom plate. Mm -hmm. And I cut it right there to make moving it fast and easy. And so now I'm just gonna knock this little section off and put a brand new piece that does reconnect it to the bottom plate. I'm not a carpenter or anything, but I think we already framed that wall. <laughs> I'm not sure. Didn't we not frame think, it already? Yeah. Hey, Jamie, we're on the second floor now. Yeah, bro, you're on the wrong here, floor, here. dude. in the right spot up there, would you? <laughs> Great, maybe not yep. I'm guessing this door location was based off of that window location since he just sawed it out. And I'm guessing he totally took it down because he cut and cut this anchor bolt that was under I burned it. Up. Look at all the sawzall blades I tried. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. And they, didn't, and they didn't even touch that thing. Well, now you can just unbolt it. Maybe. 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 Oh, it's coming out. You're good. We were wondering what you were doing. Sawzall in for like 10 minutes straight. I mean, I, I it did not. It was immovable, Im impenetrable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see the little cut. I did, I nicked it. So it's, how many five sawzall blades got got maybe a quarter? I maybe, mean, not even three sixteenths, an eighth maybe. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say you're like a quarter inch in. No, probably not even. I mean, yeah, I maybe. tried to get it from every angle you can see, and dude, I was just. <laughs> That's hardened steel, I assume. I mean, these things are and tough. Man, I'm sure he was cursing me with every stroke of that sawzall, too. Oh, uh, wow. Bad. That's a tough bolt. Ray's drill quit working, and then I threw it in the woods over there. Yeah. So, for you, I have an extra impact that you may keep as your own. Oh, man. Because I got a new one that's better. Or I think it's better. It's actually so Oh, oh. So, thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I wasn't going to lie to you and say I didn't steal from your truck. I was actually looking for your flex when I came across Okay. Your <laughs> She's all yours. I was going to give it back. Thanks. There's no more that? worthy yeah. person to have my drill. Oh, Besides uh, oh, <laughs> Arlo. Dude, do I have my muck boots around here? <laughs> it's getting thick, bro. <laughs> Looks 
Looks like you got her all patched up. Oh, it's like nothing ever happened. What? We, what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened here. There is nothing to see here. I didn't actually. see anything. Did you? Um, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. It is not. It's time to leave. Almost done with framing walls here, so I thought I'd take just a second if you're interested in some of the framing dimension stuff we're doing here. All of our rough openings are framed two inches over the door slab opening. So for instance, a 30 inch interior door gets a 32 inch rough opening, and then the trim will take up those extra inches and we'll have a little room to shim. But the headers that run across the top of the jacks on those openings are another three inches long. So for instance, a 30 inch slab door would have a 32 inch RO rough opening and it would have 35 inch headers on top of those jacks, single jack on each side. So that's just a real basic look at the door openings. Window openings very similar. We get a rough opening for the window and we just frame it to that and then they send us the window undersized by a quarter inch to a half inch all the way around. They nail on with a flange. That's the basics of it. What seems a little crazy here is that we just did this exact wall setup, yeah. but it was flipped. It was yeah. like a yeah. mirror image. Yeah. And so I thought this side was gonna be super easy, but it was actually super confusing because it was like totally flipped. Yeah, so exactly. that didn't help us out as much as I was hoping at all today. I'm still well, let's brain dead. A couple times I've gone back and gone up over there and measured <laughs> what was there just to see. That's like a full it. size cheat sheet on the other size, <laughs> exactly. uh, other side except it's flipped. Sure at, you know? It's backwards and upside down. Yeah. 